If you love chicken or you're looking for exciting new chicken recipes, then this video is for you. Hey everyone, this is Kiki. In today's video, I've put together 10 of my most exciting chicken recipes. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy watching. For the first recipe, we're going to be diving into the world of Jamaican cuisine to bring you this hot, sizzling and spicy jerk chicken. To make this, you're going to need the following ingredients. Start by adding everything to a blender. So I've added some green onions, some fresh thyme, garlic cloves, scotch bonnet peppers, chicken bouillon cubes, some allspice or ground pimento seeds, brown sugar, lemon juice, and oil. You can also add a little bit of ginger if you have that. Blend everything up until you get a paste. I'm using my Ninja Chopper, which is like a small food processor. When that's done, get the chicken. My chicken has been cleaned and pat dried. Add a generous amount of salt and then add the blended marinade. And I'm using chicken thighs for this, which is my preferred cut for jerk chicken, but you can use any part of the chicken you prefer. Massage the marinade into the chicken until it's well covered. If you're using uncut chicken thighs or whole chicken thighs, you can cut marks into the thighs so that the seasoning can really get deep into it. Cover and allow this marinade in the fridge for at least 6 hours. You can leave it for up to a day or even 2 days. The longer you leave it, the more flavorful the chicken is going to be. When you're ready, transfer the chicken to a preheated grill. I'm using my Ninja XL indoor grill. If you don't have a grill, you can bake this in the oven using the broil setting. You can also make this in the air fryer using the roast function. I've made this so many different ways and I find that the grill is what gives the most authentic taste. Grill this on low for about 25 to 30 minutes. If you have an outdoor grill, you can light that up and that would give you an even more authentic taste. But if you don't have one, this grill is going to be the next best thing. After about 30 minutes, our jerk chicken is ready. It's so good, it's packed with flavor and it's so perfectly balanced. It is a little bit spicy, so if you can't handle the heat or you don't like spicy food, you want to reduce the scotch bonnet pepper to one or even half. Let me know if you do make this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. This popcorn chicken is so good, you will want to make it over and over and over again. It's great for the whole family, so let me show you how I make it. To start, you're going to need some chicken breast. Cut the excess fat of the chicken and then cut the chicken into bite-sized pieces. You can also cut this lengthwise to make some fun chicken strips. After cutting, transfer it to a bowl and then set aside. Next, combine all the spices in a smaller bowl. So here I have salt, chicken bouillon cubes, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika and cayenne pepper. Give this a good mix and set aside. And we're going to use the spice mix in two different places. Take part of the spice mix and add a generous amount to the chicken. Also add buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, I've added a video at the end that shows how to make simple homemade buttermilk. The buttermilk will help tenderize the chicken and also makes it super juicy after frying. And also, because the buttermilk is thick, it will help hold the butter so we won't be needing eggs for this recipe. 
mix the buttermilk and the spices well into the chicken cover transfer to the fridge and allow to marinate for at least one hour when you're ready to fry Prepare the coating by adding flour and the other parts of the spice mix. Give this a very good mix. If you want your chicken extra crispy, you can add a little bit of baking powder. Before doing this, you can start heating up some oil in a deep pot. Or if you have a deep fryer, you can turn that on and get that preheating. Now we're going to cut the chicken in the flour mix. So take the chicken one at a time and transfer to the flour or you can use a frying spoon to make this process faster. If you're using a spoon, make sure you shake off the excess butter before putting it in the flour. Cover the bowl and then shake this all around until the chicken is well coated. You can also do this in a paper bag or ziplock. Make sure all the sides are well coated and make sure there are no pieces of chicken clumped together. When you're done, use the slotted spoon to scoop the chicken off the flour. Make sure you wash the buttermilk mix off the spoon before doing this. If you don't do that, the spoon is going to be really hard to wash after frying, especially if you're using this type of spoon. Transfer the chicken to the hot oil and make sure you don't add too much so the pan is not overcrowded. If you overcrowd the pan, the chicken won't come out as crispy and it may soak too much oil. Fry this for about 10 minutes or until it's golden brown. If you're using a deep fryer, fry using your regular chicken setting. It's also going to take about 10 minutes. And you want to fry this on medium heat. The chicken shouldn't turn brown immediately you add to the oil because that would mean the oil is too hot. If you have a full thermometer, your frying oil should be about 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. When it's golden brown like this, take it out of the oil. You can see how good and crispy that looks. Repeat the same process with the remaining chicken and transfer to a bowl lined with a paper towel. Make sure you don't pile up the chicken too much in the bowl. The chicken needs air so it remains crispy so you can use a strainer or a cooling rack. I serve this with some air fried french fries, added some of our favorite condiments and the whole family enjoyed it. And here is the buttermilk video as promised. To make buttermilk, add about a tablespoon of lemon juice or white vinegar to a cup of milk. I'm using liquid milk. You can also use powdered milk mixed with water. Allow that sit for about 15 minutes. The acidity of the lemon or vinegar is going to curdle the milk, giving you homemade buttermilk. You can use this for the chicken or any recipe that calls for buttermilk. This chicken and potato dish is the perfect comfort meal to make for lunch or dinner. To make this, grab your chicken. I'm using chicken wings for this recipe. Wash and pat dry the chicken and then season it with salt, garlic powder, onion powder, a little chicken bouillon cubes and fresh thyme. If you don't have fresh thyme, you can definitely use dried. I also added some paprika pepper for color and cayenne pepper for heat. Gently rub the spices into the chicken and then cover with a plastic wrap and place in the fridge. You're going to marinate this for at least one hour. You can marinate for longer if you have the time. I like to marinate mine overnight. After the chicken has marinated and you're ready to make the dish, you're going to prep the other ingredients. Peel, cut and wash the potatoes. I'm using Irish potatoes, also called rosette potatoes. 
when you're done heat up just a little oil and we're going to add the marinated chicken wings and we're going to brown this on all sides make sure you don't overcrowd the pan when doing this so the chicken can brown properly depending on the size of your pan you can do this in two to three batches and you want to do this on high heat so the chicken can brown properly if the heat is on the lower side or the pan is overcrowded the chicken will start to release its juices and then it will start to steam or boil instead of browning so you definitely want to avoid that when the chicken has browned on all sides add the potatoes and then add enough water to cook the potatoes and then you're going to add a little bit of salt we're going to cook this until the potatoes are cooked but a bit firm and this should take about 10 to 12 minutes while the potatoes are cooking you're going to prepare the other ingredients I'm going to cut some carrots. I'm using my crinkle cutter to cut it just for the texture and just for it to look pretty. This cutter is available in my shop on Instagram at Kiki's Favorite Things and it's also available on Amazon. I'm going to add both links in the description box as well as the recipe for this dish. Moving on to the other vegetables, I'm cutting some green bell peppers and also some red bell peppers. You can add more or remove any vegetables to suit your preference. Next, prepare the corn flour slurry by mixing cornstarch with water. Give this a good mix until it's completely smooth. This is going to act as our thickening agent. You can also use flour in place of corn flour if you don't have that. To make the stir fry, melt some butter. You can also use any oil of your choice. Add some chopped onions, minced garlic and ginger and stir fry this for a few minutes. Next, add some chopped scotch bonnet peppers and you're going to stir fry this for another 1-2 to two minutes. If you don't like spicy food, you can skip this step. Next, add the carrots. I'm adding the carrots first because it's the hardest and it takes the longest to cook. Stir fry this for a few minutes, about 3 minutes or so, before adding the bell peppers. Next, you're going to season this with salt, some crushed chicken bouillon cubes and pepper. Now continue to stir fry this for about 2 minutes until the peppers are tender. Take the stir fry of the heat and then check on the chicken and potatoes. The chicken should be fully cooked at this point and the potatoes should be nice and cooked but not soft. Add the stir fry and then add the corn flour slurry we made earlier. After adding the slurry, mix immediately until everything comes together. The corn flour slurry is going to start to thicken the dish as it begins to heat up. You can also thicken this without the use of the corn flour slurry by mashing some of the potatoes until the sauce starts to thicken. At this point you can also add more water if it's too thick until you get the right consistency. Cover and allow to cook on low heat for a few minutes and then your chicken and potato meal is ready. Serve hot and you can enjoy this for lunch or dinner. Let me know if you decide to make this and let me know how much you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this recipe, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Everyone gather here and let's make rotisserie chicken. Rot
rotisserie chick rotisserie chicken one moment rotisserie chicken rotisserie chicken rotisserie chicken okay to make rotisserie chicken start by combining all your spices the full ingredients are going to be in the description box mix the spices then set aside next grab your whole chicken you want to use a small to medium chicken for this i already washed and cleaned the chicken so i'm just going to pat dry with a paper towel drizzle a good amount of olive oil or any oil of your choice and then rub it in then add the dry rub this is a mixture of garlic powder onion powder black pepper salt chicken bouillon cube and paprika rub this all over the chicken including the inside also don't forget to get the inner ties and in between the wings when you're done transfer the chicken to a bowl that is big enough or wrap with a plastic wrap and then place in the fridge and let it marinate overnight after the chicken has marinated you're going to tie it with a kitchen twine the two reasons for tying are number one it helps the chicken cook more evenly and number two it helps the chicken rotate easily so it's not flapping around in the oven tie the chicken ties first and then do a double knot on the edge of the leg Turn the chicken to the other side and then pass the twine through each wing. Do another knot like this and then do a second knot to secure. Turn the chicken again to the other side and then use the twine to hold the tips of the wings. Do another double knot on the chest of the chicken. Make sure the knot is tied really tight. You can stop here and cut the twine, but I like to do just one more tie by taking the rope across the chest and tying it on the back. When you're done, take the rotisserie rod and then put it from one end and let it come out on the other. Get the hook and secure it tightly on the chicken. And you find this rod in your oven's accessories. Most compact ovens come with the rotisserie function, so definitely check your oven in case you missed it. When it's all done, I just like to sprinkle the leftover spices so it looks even. If you don't have any leftover spices, that's fine, you can just leave it. By this time, you should start preheating your oven to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. Transfer the chicken to the preheated oven and we're going to cook this for about 40 minutes on low medium heat. The temperature of your oven may vary, but you can check the manual to see the right time and temperature for rotisserie. The oven I'm using is by Quizmax and you can find this exact item on my Amazon storefront. I'll put the link in the description box if you want to check that out. The oven recommended time was for 25 minutes, but I left it for an additional 15 minutes because I wanted a slower roast. When it's done, take it out and you want to allow this rest for at least 15 minutes. Don't forget to cut the twine off before serving. I've made whole chicken many times, but this was my first time making rotisserie chicken and it was 100% worth it. 
The chicken was super juicy and tender. It was flavorful to the bone and I would never have rotisserie chicken any other way. I've had several store-bought rotisserie chickens and none of them even comes close to the taste of this one. I served this in a bed of jello fries and you can find my jello fries recipe by going through my page or searching Kiki Foodies jello fries. I really hope you get to try this and if you do, I'd love to hear from you so leave me a comment or send me a DM on my Instagram page. My Instagram name is Kiki Foodies. Thanks everyone for watching and don't forget to like this post if you like the content. Hope you enjoy. Cheers. This suya chicken wings is so good, you would want to make it over and over and over again. Let me show you how I made this. So you're going to get your chicken wings properly washed and cleaned and you're going to season with the spices. Here I have salt, garlic powder, onion powder, chicken bouillon cube and some suya spice. If you don't know what suya spice is, it's a blend of processed peanuts and some other spices and you can get this at your local Nigerian or African store. You can also get it online in stores like Amazon, Etsy or any other store they sell Nigerian groceries. After adding the spices, give it a very good rub, then cover and allow to marinate in the fridge for about one hour. You can leave it for longer if you have the time. When you're done, transfer this to your grill or air fryer. I'm using the Ninja Indoor XL grill, which is kind of like a mix of a grill and an air fryer. I'm going to air fry this for about 15 minutes. You can also make this in your traditional oven. After about 15 to 20 minutes, the chicken wings should be ready. If you're going to use a traditional air fryer to do this, you may need to turn the chicken midway so the other side gets crispy too. Transfer the chicken to a bowl and then add some more soya spice as the dry rub. Now shake this very well so it cuts the chicken evenly and your soya chicken wings is ready. It's so yummy and crispy but it is a bit spicy because of the soya spice. So if you love spicy food you will definitely love this. If you're not a big fan of spicy food you can always reduce the amount of soya spice you use. Serve with some freshly cut vegetables. You can enjoy this by itself or you can pair this with a meal. Let me know if you get to make this and cheers. This butterfly chicken and potatoes is a great way to enjoy whole chicken with your friends or family. To make this, you're going to start by combining all your spices. Here I have some garlic powder, onion powder, salt, bouillon cube, pepper and paprika. Go ahead and mix this up and set aside. In a separate bowl, add some butter. Add about one and a half teaspoon of the mixed spices, then mix to combine. And it helps if your butter is room temperature and soft, so it's easier to mix. After mixing, set aside and then we're going to get started on the chicken. Wash the chicken properly and after washing, you're going to go ahead and butterfly the chicken. To do this, use a kitchen scissors to cut about an inch of the back. I usually save the back in the freezer and when I have enough, I'll use it to make some really good chicken stock. After taking that off, I'm going to give the chicken another rinse. Next, loosen the skin of the chicken using the back of a spoon. You want to be careful when doing this so you don't leave holes in the skin. After doing that, add the spiced butter we mixed earlier. Put this all over the skin, including the thighs if you can. Gently massage and flatten the butter under the skin so it covers evenly. 
The spiced butter is going to make the chicken extra juicy and flavorful. When that's done, flip the chicken to the other side and I'm going to add the previously mixed spices. Add a generous amount of the spices, making sure to cover every part of the chicken. Next, I'll add some oil and then I'll massage the spices and oil into the chicken. When you're done with the back, turn the chicken to the other side and repeat the same process. Make sure you get the spices on every part of the chicken including the wings and back of the thighs. When you're done with that, put the chicken in a large dish or baking tray and marinate in the fridge overnight. If you're in a hurry, you can marinate the chicken for just one hour, but I always recommend marinating it for longer. When you're ready to cook the chicken, add some cut potatoes. I'm using Irish or rosette potatoes for this. Also, add some carrots, some chopped red bell peppers, some chopped onions, scotch bonnet peppers, some minced garlic and some fresh thyme. Also add about one teaspoon of the spice mix. Mix this all together and then place the chicken on top. If you have any spice mix left you can sprinkle it on top of the chicken like I did. I'll transfer this to the oven and I'm going to bake this for 40 minutes at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. When it's about halfway cooked, you can baste the chicken with the juices using a baster or using a spoon. After about 40 minutes, the chicken should be fully cooked. If you have a food thermometer, you can insert it at the thickest part of the tie and you know it's fully cooked when the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit, which is also about 74 degrees Celsius. Allow the chicken rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before serving. Let me know if you're going to try this. Please like, share and comment if you enjoyed watching this video. It really helps the channel grow. This has been my go-to chicken wings recipe for years. It's so easy to make, so let me show you how I make it. We're going to make the chicken into a lollipop chicken. Do this by using a sharp knife to cut a line at the top of the leg and then use the knife to just press the meat towards the bottom. Remove the edge from the top to make it neater and you can save those in the fridge to use for meat stock later. Repeat the process with the remaining of the chicken and then we're going to proceed to season it. To season, you need salt, paprika pepper, crushed chicken bouillon cubes, some garlic powder and onion powder, parsley flakes, oil and lemon juice. Now mix all the spices until everything comes together and then you're going to add the chicken. Rub the chicken properly in the marinade and then we're going to transfer this to a baking tray. Before transferring the chicken, make sure you're already preheating your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That's also equivalent to 190 degrees Celsius. 
put the chicken with the meat side down and then we're going to bake this in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes. You can also do this in the air fryer at around the same temperature. It should take about 15 to 20 minutes. While the chicken is cooking, you can prepare the glaze. You only need three ingredients for the glaze and that is barbecue sauce, some sriracha sauce and honey. You can also use maple syrup or regular sugar in place of honey. Cover and shake well until it comes together and then the glaze is ready. Check on the chicken. It should be brown and crispy at this time. Now you're going to dip the chicken one at a time into the prepared glaze. When you're done, transfer the glazed chicken back to the baking tray and you're going to take this back to the oven and bake for an additional 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, your sweet and spicy glazed chicken lollipop wings are ready. This is my super simple air fryer chicken. I'll be using chicken thighs for this one. You can use any parts of the chicken you prefer. Start by seasoning the chicken with my go-to seasoning. That is salt, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, cayenne pepper, and cumin. I also added some minced garlic and fresh thyme. Squeeze about half a lemon in. The lemon is going to make the chicken really nice and tender. Now rub the spices in until the chicken is fully coated. When you're done, cover this with a plastic wrap, transfer to the fridge and marinate for 1-2 to two hours. You can marinate for longer if you have the time. The longer you marinate, the more tender the chicken is going to be because of the lemon juice and the more flavorful the chicken will turn out. When you're done, transfer to the air fryer and you're going to air fry this for about 20 minutes. You can also bake this in a traditional oven or a grill. I'm using my Ninja air fryer for this. This is the very first air fryer I ever got and it's still in premium condition even though I use it every day. This can also be found on my Amazon storefront and I'm going to put the link in the description box. The chicken thighs are ready. Like I said, it's super fast and simple to make. One of the reasons I love air frying my chicken thighs is because chicken thighs is so oily. I mean, look at all the oil that came out from the thighs, even though I didn't add any oil to it. I like to save the oil and use for my stews and other meals because it's super flavorful. And here you have it, quick and simple air fryer chicken thighs. Serve with rice and enjoy. Let's make hot, tangy and spicy buffalo wings. Start by seasoning the chicken with some flour, bouillon cubes, pepper and garlic powder. Also add some baking powder. The baking powder is going to give it a very nice and crispy texture. Mix the spices in until the chicken is well coated. Then you're going to cover and put this in the fridge and allow it marinate for at least 2 hours. After the chicken has marinated, we're going to bake them on low heat. You can either use an air fryer or a conventional oven to do this. If you're using an oven, you want to bake on low for about 40 minutes. Or if you're using an air fryer, you can air fry on low medium heat for about 20 to 25 minutes. While the chicken is baking, we're going to prepare the buffalo sauce. 
To do this, start by melting some butter in a pan and then add the hot sauce. You can use any brand of hot sauce you prefer. After adding the hot sauce, add a little bit of honey. And I also like to add a little bit of garlic powder. Give this a good mix until you have a nice and beautiful sauce, then turn off the heat and take it out. Check on the chicken. The chicken should be nice and crispy after about 20 minutes. Transfer the chicken to a white bowl and then you're going to pour that beautiful sauce all over it. When you're done, give it a good mix and make sure you cover every part of the chicken in the sauce. When the chicken is fully coated, serve hot with some blue cheese dip and celery. And there you have it, easy to make, hot, tangy and spicy buffalo wings. This simple yet delicious chicken stir fry. It's super simple to make, it takes about 15 minutes and I promise you this is going to be one of your favorite dishes, so let's get to it. So first you want to prep all the ingredients. Here I have carrots, green bell pepper, red bell pepper. I am going to slice this thinly, you can cut it any shape you like. I'm also going to slice some onions and some finger chili. And that'll be it for the vegetables. For the meat, I'm going to be using chicken thighs. And here I'm just trimming off the excess fat of the meat. You can also use chicken breast for this recipe, but bear in mind it's not going to be as juicy. After trimming off the fat, I will discard it and next I'll cut the chicken into thin strips. And you want to try to cut this about the same size so you don't have big chunks so the meat cooks evenly. After cutting, I'm going to slightly season with a little bit of chicken bouillon cube which is um, chicken seasoning and a little bit of garlic powder i'll give this a good mix and just let it marinate for about five minutes while i prepare the sauce for the sauce i am going to combine soy sauce a little bit of oyster sauce some chinese cooking wine a little bit of sugar sesame oil and water and bear in mind that the sugar does not make the sauce sweet it's just to balance the other ingredients so please do not be afraid to add that and all the ingredients used are going to be listed in the description box with the exact measurements so be sure to check that out and all of these can be bought at your local grocery store in a separate bowl, I'm going to mix cornstarch and water. This is going to act as the thickening agent for the sauce. If you don't have cornstarch, you can also use all-purpose flour or leave it out. So now to make the sauce. I've added a little bit of oil and I'm going to let that heat up and then I'll add the chicken. I'll stir fry this for about 5 minutes until it is no longer pink. And I make sure my pan is on really really high heat while doing this so the chicken doesn't start steaming and releasing its juices. After about 5 minutes, I am now going to add some minced garlic. I'm also going to add the chopped peppers and onion. I'll stir fry this for about 1 minute. Next, I'm going to add in the carrots and the bell peppers. 
and I'm going to stir fry this for about two minutes. If you do not like your carrots on the crunchy side, you can add it while stir frying the chicken so it cooks a little bit more. Next, I'm going to go in with the soy sauce mix and I'm going to rinse the bowl and add in a little bit of water, about one tablespoon and I'm going to stir fry this for about one minute. After that, I'll add in the corn starch slurry and I'll stir fry this until it is thickened. And I forgot to mention earlier that please make sure you have your rice already cooking, assuming you're eating it with rice. Please make sure your rice is already cooking or already cooked before starting the sauce as the stir fry is best enjoyed hot. So after cooking for about one to two minutes, you can add a little bit of water if it's too thick. You can just adjust this to fit your preference. If you like your sauce on the thicker side, you can leave it like this. If you like it a bit looser, add a little bit of water until it meets your perfect consistency. And just like that, the sauce is ready. It's so tasty, super easy to make and way, way better than takeout. I'm gonna serve this with plain basmati rice and enjoy. If you have any questions about this recipe, you can always leave me a comment and I'll be more than happy to answer them. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you everyone who has subscribed to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe today and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.